Hello, the video that follows is um, on the topic of properties of circles and it specifically is the law where the angle in a semicircle is equal to 90 degrees. Okay, um, firstly people look at what you have. You have a semicircle, okay? So how do we make a semicircle? Remember, a semicircle if I draw a diameter, that's really important. It must be a diameter. So it must go through the center O. Then obviously I now have two semicircles. The upper part is a semicircle, but the lower part is also a semicircle. Okay, so that is the first thing that you must look and search for people. Search whether you've got a diameter. Whenever you have a diameter, right, then you go on. You go and look for the next thing. What is the next thing? You must have an angle in a semicircle. Okay, so what that means is you can take any point on the circumference, right? If you now draw a line from the one end, ah, sorry, from the one end of the diameter to that point and then from the other end of the diameter to that point. Then this becomes the angle in the semicircle. Okay, And the law says that angle is always 90 degrees. Okay, So people, it really means you can have any point on this half of the circumference. Right. So let's choose another one. If you have another point there. All right. And importantly, the lines must go from the one end of the diameter to the point and from the other end of the diameter to the same point. Then once again, this becomes an angle in a semicircle. OK, sorry. That becomes an angle in the semicircle and that is 90 degrees. Right. I want to very quickly refer you back to another law that we already done. And that law says that the center angle, uh, sorry, center angle is equal to twice the circumference angle. Okay. So now let's look at this one. This part is a center angle, isn't it? Okay, center is the O. If you have two radii and they can lie in any way, people, then that forms a center angle. Okay, and then if you look from these two ends, right, you have here a circumference angle, isn't it? from the same distances. So if you look at that, people, this is a straight line, so that's 180 degrees, isn't it? Therefore, the circumference angle, okay, must be half of that, okay? Or, let's work it out. If the center angle is 180 degrees, then it equals twice how much, okay? How much must that one be? It must be twice times 90 then it gives you a 180 okay so this really is like a specialized law of the center angle equaling um ach, yeah the center angling angle equaling the two twice the circumference angle right but i would prefer you to just remember what i explained first you must first identify a semicircle to identify a semicircle you must have a diameter Okay, and that then divides the angle of the circle into two parts. Okay, and each part is a semicircle. And then if you have any angle inside the semicircle, then that angle is 90 degrees. Right, let me do an example. You have the following drawing. Okay, they tell you that AD is parallel to OC. Okay, so remember, we indicate that with the arrows, right? 
Then they also tell you that AB is a diameter, right? AB. AB. Sorry, this is B. Is a diameter. So when you see the word diameter, immediately look whether you've got a angle in a semicircle. Can you see that in this case you don't have an angle um, in a semicircle? Okay, because if you look at this one, this comes from the one end of the diameter, but there is no line from the other end of the diameter. Can you see that? Right. So I'm now going to put this in. People, I'm going to draw that myself. So now I've got a line from the one end of the diameter and a line of the other end of the diameter to one single point on the circumference. So now I made this a 90 degree angle. All right. Then they also tell you that angle OCD is 55 degrees. O OCD is 55 degrees. And they ask you to find angle BOC. So where is BOC? BOC, this angle is being asked. All right. Now, next thing. If they give you parallel lines, okay, you must always think of the laws of parallel lines, okay, the angle laws. We know alternate angles, we know, um, uh, now I don't get to the word, uh, co-interior angles, okay, those angles you must think of. All right, so now we must find BOC, BOC. People, if I turn this around now, let me just turn it this way, and that's what I keep on telling you in class. Turn your page because it makes it easier to recognize. Can you see that BOC is a center angle? Okay, because this is a radius, this is a radius, that goes comes from your center, so this is a center angle. All right, now have a look whether you also got a circumference angle, so you must go back one law, okay? So from here, we've got an a point on the circumference. Do you agree? All right. So this is one of the lines that would form a circumference angle. But people, we don't have this line. Can you see? All right. So that law is not going to apply right now. All right. So let's go back and let's try and find a way in which we can solve this problem. So start at AD and OC, right? And let's find alternating angles. Do we have alternating angles here? No, we don't, right? Then I go to my co-interior angles. Now my co-interior angles, this is a parallel line. Remember, I've got this, people. So somehow, somewhere, I will have to start working with this angle. That's the only one that is given to you. So let's find co-interior. Then we see, oh, okay. This angle ADC is co-interior with DCO. Are you with me? And the law says that these two are 180 degrees. So angle ADC, um, A. D, C, plus angle D, C, O, D, C, O, equals 180 degrees. Now we can substitute D, C, O with 55 degrees, okay? And we can therefore calculate angle A, D, C. And if you calculate that, you will get 125 degrees, All right? So now put your information in. This green part or angle is 125 degrees. Right. Are you with me? Now, we also know that this is a 90 degree angle. So, we can actually calculate that remainder. Do you agree? So, that's 125 
minus 90. Okay, that will give me angle B, D, C. So angle B, D, C equals 125 degrees minus 90 degrees, which gives me 35 degrees. Okay, oh, my drawing is becoming too small. So let me just make this red and then we write 35 degrees down there. All right, now let's turn this again. Okay, and I want you to now recognize the following. Remember when we started, I told you, this is a radius and that is a radius. Okay, which means this becomes a center angle. And remember now, our law says the center angle is twice the circumference angle. Now, the center angle, e angle equals twice the circumference angle. Right. The center angle, people, is the one that is being asked. That's the question mark. That's BOC. BOC. Now go back, turn your page, and look whether you can actually find a circumference angle. And in this case, a circumference angle must be formed starting from B and starting from C. So, look at this. That's one line starting from B. And this is another line starting from C. And now you will see that this circumference angle is actually, circumference angle is actually 35 degrees. Okay, so go back to your law. Angle BOC is twice the circumference angle. And what did we calculate was the circumference angle? The circumference angle was 35 degrees. So how much is angle to BOC? It is 70 degrees. Okay, I want to emphasize people the method you must use to solve these problems is by number one, first know all your laws. If you don't know the laws, people, you don't know where to start searching, right? You have now seen very clearly that I used the law of the angle in the semicircle to find that angle. Angle B, D, C, all right? But also, that angle I now recognize as the circumference angle. So I also used my center angle equals twice circumference angle to solve this problem. So you must really, if you want to solve these kind of questions, you must really start going through your laws, all right? Let me just quickly go and um, go to the laws that you do. People, you start with center angle. Look whether you've got a center angle. Look whether you've got a circumference angle. Right. Look whether you've got an angle in a semicircle. Look whether you've got an angle in the same um, segment. You must search for it. And the way you can search for it is by going through these laws one by one and find the one that is going to help you to solve the problem. So I repeat, number one, you must know these laws very, very well. Okay? And when you try and solve things like that, you must just simply systematically go and look. Have I got law one? Have I got law two? Have I got law three? Have I got law four? Okay? That's the only way in which you are able to solve this. All right. I hope this helps. Um, it needs a little bit of practice. You must practice your eye so that you can actually see all these laws.